For 25 years, Christ Faith Tabernacle has spread across the globe, empowering the saints for the season of the Lord's return. This season has arrived. Join Apostle Alfred and Reverend Pierre Williams in this year of God's glory as we celebrate the Christ Faith Tabernacle 25th year jubilee from the 23rd of February to the 1st of March. Our names shall be great, nation will come out of us, the Lord has blessed us and nobody can revoke it. Be empowered alongside ministers from across the globe to walk in the miraculous, see healings, miracles, signs and wonders in your ministry. Come and celebrate 25 incredible years that have seen Christ Pave Tabernacle spread across the globe, meeting dignitaries and changing nations. You are healed right now in the name of Jesus by the blood of the risen Lord. Let them see Jesus shine through your life like never before. And you are bulletproof as long as you are walking under the covering of the Almighty. You got to know that God has set you apart special. God is very, very involved in every little thing. The Christ Faith Tabernacle Silver Jubilee, Leadership Training Daily, Power Miracle Nights every evening from 7 p.m. and the official dedication of the incredible CFT Cathedral Woolwich on Sunday, March the 1st at 4 p.m. The venue, CFT Cathedral, 186 Power Street, Woolwich, London, SE18 6NL. Visit cftchurches.org or call 020 8316 2332. The world and all that dwells therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart who does not lift up his heart to what is false, nor swear deceitfully. He shall receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, He is the King of glory.
God and our King, it is a privilege to be part of your sins on earth. The heavens are your throne and the earth your foes too. What temple could the hands of mortal men build to contain you, O God of Abraham? But we thank you from your infinite wisdom as you have counted us worthy as your sins on earth that we may pitch a tent and build a tabernacle for your name in which you enthrone yourself and derive pleasure in the priest's from the lips of your sins. O oh Lord our God, by your mighty unction and power and mercy, as we stand in your presence this hour, may the glory of your presence be made manifest upon your sons and daughters. May the covenants of your name be fulfilled in this place. May the spirit of joy, gladness, fill the hearts of your saints. May your praises well out of our lips unto your most holy throne. Amen. Father, as we worship you and dedicate this temple to you, we ask you, O Father, that you would derive pleasure in our praise. Amen. In Jesus' holy and anointed name we are prayed. Amen. Now we're going to have some praise and worship. The message of the Lord has not died in this house. We worship the Lord. For you are good and your mercy and joy forever. Hey! People from every nation. We speak it prophetically right now, oh Lord Jesus. Hey! We are going to say.
this afternoon to specifically acknowledge and welcome uh, our special guest for this occasion. Our special guest of honor is in the person of His Excellency, General Dr. Yakubu Gawan, the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic. Sir, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated. Be your grace the presiding bishop of the Christ Faith Tabernacle Churches International. Your graces, my Lord, spiritual. All our fathers in the Lord, and may I use the popular Christian protocol, all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Greetings to you all in the precious name of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Amen. Well, I have been associated with this church over six years now, mainly for the purpose of praying for our nation, Nigeria, other nations in Africa, our host nation, and humanity at large. And I'm always here, not only as a guest, 
but always as a special guest of honor. But this time, I'm here as a special guest of honor a two-prong or double-barrel event that is being hosted by the church, the 25th anniversary celebrations, your silver jubilee. I feel greatly honored, as I always do when I'm here. I therefore wish to reciprocate by sincerely thanking Apostle Alfred uh, T.B. William and the church leadership for the honor done me and also to all of you invited to this event. So I welcome everyone and all families of Christ represented here today. I especially welcome and salute all God's servants from all denominations are present here today from all over the world in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I have known the leadership of this church, Apostle Alfred T.B. Williams, and his endearing, supportive wife, Reverend P. Omar Williams, for several years now. In all of those years, they have always amazed me with their zeal for things of God and their service to community and humanity. In much the same way, I have not ceased to be amazed at the many wonderful ways in which God has continually demonstrated his love, not just for the couple, but for his household, not just in London, but in faraway places all over the world, especially in Nigeria, Cameroon, and several other parts of Africa and the world. I believe strongly 25th anniversary and the dedication of this grand cathedral in Woolwich bears profound testimony of God's presence in this house. Certainly, our great God does his things in a grand style and seals his servants duly for all to see and know that he truly is God. 25 years ago, Christ's Faith Tabernacle began her journey in London. Today, that journey has produced fruits that we can all see and to which we all readily can attest. It may interest you to know that when Apostle Williams acquired this property a few years ago, I had the privilege of being conducted by him round the premises. I can assure you there is a lot of difference uh, from then on, from what I saw today. On two or three occasions, he put the cathedral at the disposal of Nigeria Praise, the interdenominational prayer group of which I'm honored to chair, to be the chairman and convener. Today, again, I would like to publicly convey both my personal appreciation as well as that of the body of conveners, Nigeria Praise, 
to Christ Faith Tabernacle and to Apostle Williams. Today, as we formally dedicate the grand auditorium of this Christ Faith Tabernacle Cathedral, which remains, reminds me of King Solomon's Temple for the Lord, to the glory of our ever-loving God. I am proud to identify with the special grace of God upon Christ's faith tabernacle. <clears throat> Clearly, these milestones are evidence of God's faithfulness to his servants in their quest to expand his kingdom in the United Kingdom and Nigeria, as well as various parts of Africa, Europe, America, and the world in general. I salute the courage of the founders of Christ Faith Tabernacle, the leaders and ministers of Tabernacle, as well as all workers and members of the church for your ceaseless labor of love to support and encourage the faith as well as to advance the frontiers of God's kingdom, not only in this country, but in the world at large. For the old, for the young, for the children, and may I say well done to the children for their uh, excellent performance uh, here earlier on. Honestly, I'm really very, very impressed. I notice, though, that the woman here appears to appear to be a bit more favored, perhaps for no for a good reason, because of the positive influence of Reverend Mrs. Oma Williams. You can readily see her involvement in everything that the church does. Although the man does his thing, she also does her things, but always in support of the work of her dear husband. Now, if you doubt my observation, please help us how come that groups that are women-oriented have proper names or acronyms that sound sweet to the ears, whilst those that concern men <laughs> appear to be very formal, uh, like old school teachers. <laughs> well, for example, female ushers in Christ's Faith Tabernacle are Joannas. They are Joannas. Now, you know who Joanna is. And the gender group uh, is word. Now, it is say word, woman of royal destiny. But what do we have for men? <laughs> what do we have for men? Well, protocol, protocol team are just called male ushers. <laughs> and there is one that I cannot pronounce, except it is, uh, uh, I think, Loti, well, is it Loti Wo? No, I know he's, a, well, it is light of the world. Now, it goes without saying that men of this fellowship have work to do. I think you should start naming your organizations out of the names of the great uh, men who were in the uh, men of faith, like Gideon, etc., Mordecai, etc., so that you can be well recognized. But over time and across nations, Apostle Williams, a good shepherd, has utilized the platform of the Christ Faith Tabernacle 
uh, ministry to contribute immensely uh, to the spread of the word of God to several parts of the world. I'm confident that posterity will eternally be grateful to him, his wife, and the entire Christ Faith Tabernacle team for the purposeful spiritual and strategic leadership that they have offered over the years in the UK, Africa, Europe, United States, and beyond. May I, well, no, let me add Australia as well. Let me add Australia. <laughs> because we, we forget them down under, but I know that we have one from down under up here. May I specially acknowledge the support of Reverend Mrs. Omar Williams, who has stood like a rock by her husband. All these years to build a church that has dedicated itself to extending God's word to its immediate community and the rest of the world. It is my fervent prayer that the good Lord will strengthen your hands in the service to God, your country, and your nation and humanity. Whilst I rejoice with the church on this auspicious occasion of the celebration of its Silver Jubilee and the dedication of its grand auditorium, now a cathedral, I crave your indulgence that you would accept my apologies at not being able to join you earlier than now at other events scheduled for the, anniversary, uh, for the anniversary since the 23rd of February uh, this year. Uh, this was due to the demands of other previously scheduled engagements that I have, especially within and outside Nigeria. Christ Faith Tabernacle certainly deserves hearty congratulations on attaining uh, the landmark age of 25 years, your silver <laughs> jubilee. I urge all leaders and members of the church to remain resolute, firm and devoted as servants and stewards of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Always praying for the good and peace of our Jerusalem, Nigeria. Especially at this time that we are battling with security problems and also the forthcoming election. Pray for the peace of your nation, pray, pray for the peace of your land, and by God's grace, all will be well Amen. with our Jerusalem, Nigeria. On behalf of my dear wife, Victoria, my family, and the Nigeria Praise family, I once more heartily congratulate you, uh, Apostle Alfred Williams, the presiding uh, bishop of the Christ Faith Tabernacle International. Your dear wife, Oma, and the entire Christ Faith Tabernacle family for the giant stride you have, you have achieved in the city of London, the United Kingdom, Europe, Africa, and the rest of the world in a relatively short period of time. I pray that you will not lose your reward from the Lord. 
May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and all yours and the church of Christ, not only in this uh, tabernacle, but throughout the world, now and always. Thank you, and may God bless you, and let's have a great celebration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The minister who introduced um, General Dr. Jakub Gowan would have told you that General Dr. Jakub Gowan is the third head of state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. From the 1st of August, 1966, to the 29th of July, 1975. Not only that, he is the man that God gave the architectural plan of Nigeria and the plans that he designed for Nigeria was to make Nigeria a first world country in 15 years, which was achievable. And he implemented the plan. Every successive government that have come till today are still trying to implement his plan. So I see him not only as a president of Nigeria, but I see him as a father of that nation. Also, in his tenure, he was the man who brought a war-torn Nigeria back to one nation. And in those days, an acronym was forged in his name. His name is Go On. And in those days, Nigeria came with Go On with One Nigeria. And up to now, even in his old age, we were, my wife and I were privileged to be his guests and his wife's guests last year when he turned 80. You will not see this man over 80 he is now, but he keeps on, having, having left the office of presidency, God led him to start a prayer movement for Nigeria that have prayed for Nigeria again and again so that God the Lord Jesus will take preeminence over the nation. And seven years ago, the Lord told me to tell him to come on my trip to the nations of Africa as God began to open the doors of the nations of Africa to me, bringing the churches together from Roman Catholic Church to Pentecostal Church to Evangelical Church, all who call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. And he was with me in Cameroon three times to set up Cameroon praise as he set up Nigeria praise. We had a program to go into Sierra Leone to set up Sierra Leone praise. And his dream is to see every nation in Africa praying to the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? So I believe very much that a man like himself ought to be celebrated. Really, when we collected the keys of this building, I was with him in a meeting, and I told him and his wife, this is the key. It was late, and despite the fact that it was late, he said to me, let's go and see the building. And himself and his wife were the first to enter this building in its old state. They went around the whole building. He was on this pulpit with his wife altar, praising God for what God has done. And I believe very much that if he saw the beginning, and in his lifetime we are doing a de dedication, we would not have any better person to come in to open the plaque for the dedication of this big cathedral. The last thing is that um, I was in their wedding 
a ceremony when General and his beautiful wife, who looks fresh and fresh and younger and younger every day. In those days, we were, in, in, we were still young, and we were among those who went to, you know, as flower boys and flower girls, flag boys and flower girls, to wave flag for both of them. Really, I tell you from my, from my young age, he is one of my mentors because he, was, he was, is a true example of a humble leader. And I believe that God has given us a privilege to celebrate his life. Just a couple of things that I may share with you uh, prior to sharing what the Lord put on my heart for tonight. I've got to tell you that praise and worship team, the choir here at Christ Faith Tabernacle, I hate to admit this, I am jealous of them. <laughs> I want to put them in a big bag and take them back to Atlanta with me. I won't even say that you're good. I won't even say that you're synchronized. But I'll tell you what I believe the Holy Spirit's how to how the Holy Spirit told me to describe you. Would you stand up for a second? The whole of the choir, the praise and worship team. Musicians, I include you in this too, because I used to be a musician. I was a guitar player. I followed the Bee Gees over from Australia a long time ago, so I, I know. The Holy Spirit, I believe, would have me tell you this. Your music preaches. Your music and your singing preach. So I want to thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your ministry. Can we give them some encouragement? You preach! You preach! Glory be to God for you. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, why are we here? You say we're here to honor a man and honor a ministry. I am not here to honor the man as much as I am here to honor the God of the man. A lot has been said about Apostle Williams, and it's all true. At least most of it's true as far as I know. What all has been said about Reverend Omar Williams is also true as far as I know, and I've known them a long time. But I would like to tell you also that What's happening here in Christ Faith Tabernacle is also happening around the world. This is not a unique, although it is wonderful and inspiring, it is a move of the Holy Spirit that we should start to recognize as global. He is the God of the whole world, not just the God of London or Atlanta or Sydney, or Nigeria. Having said that, I would like to honor not just our ministry guests that are here today, but I'd also like to honor some old friends. I'd like to honor Sister Audrey Pratt. I hope you're still here, Sister Pratt. If you are, would you wave at me? Would you like to stand up, Sister? <laughs> Sister Audrey Pratt was here 21 years ago at the beginning of this ministry, and Apostle Alfred specifically asked me to honor you tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your ministry, for both you and your husband, who I know is ailing right now, and our prayers are with him. General, for you and your bride, <laughs> while I was sitting in that chair, in fact, when you walked into the office in the back, I, I knew your history. When you walked into the office there and you sat down, the Holy Spirit said to me, you are an ambassador of the kingdom. And the Holy Spirit told me to tell you, not only are you an ambassador of peace, I saw peace on you. And to tell you that your names are recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life and that the Lord has not finished with you. 
for your eyes will not betray the calling that is upon you, and that your eyes still instill fear in my enemies, and your words will still be used to bring stability as they have in the past, so they shall in the future. And young men shall be still drawn to you to beseek the wisdom that is still in your heart. And your time is not yet, so sharpen your heart and sharpen your words, as your eyes still remain clear. So should the vision remain clear in your heart, for there is yet young lions to be raised up under your tutelage. And I will look to you to bring a steadying hand to those who come behind you. I am proud to be in your presence, sir, and your dear wife. God bless you. All right. Let's look at this 25th anniversary for a second in general terms. Two and five, two, a number of witness, five, a number of grace, tabernacle. What does that mean? Well, we get bogged down sometimes with these things, but... Two should know, everybody gets taught very well in this house. Two is a number of witness. Five is a number of... Five is a number of... Therefore, we have a tabernacle. What is a tabernacle? Well, we know that God no longer dwells in a house made with hands. He dwells in us, does he not? We are the temple of his spirit. Therefore, if we were to speak prophetically, we would say that this is a house built by man's hands, and yet now it is a house which is to be dedicated for his service, in which a witness for him and his grace dwells. Now the interesting thing, this house has survived the Second World War. And I'm interested also tonight that there is a, a type involved, and as we look around this place, it was built by a man that probably wasn't in his own right chosen of God, but he wanted to do something which represented his desire to be recognized, that he recognized God, and so he, he built a theater, and yet not being happy with building a theater, he built it with a leaning toward a describing of how he felt about God. Little did he know that God had a hand on it, and such a hand that it remained intact and standing all through the bombings of London. So I see that as a sign that God had something in mind for this building. I believe in destiny. I also believe that the building upon which the church now stands, which I have built by the grace of God 13 years ago, that piece of property, I was told by the mayor who has become a friend of God and also my friend, told me in 1916 there was a Pentecostal tent meeting held upon the property which now stands underneath the church building, which houses the people of God. And the pastor who held that Pentecostal tent meeting declared during that meeting, one day this property will be used for the purposes of God. Also, I was born, I'm just trying to instill in you a sense of destiny, because tonight I'm going to share with you what the destiny of God is for this man. Now, not just for this man, but for all men that are called with his calling. 1948, the year Israel became a nation. I have been rescued from death three times. I haven't spoken to this man of God about it, but I know, General, you have been rescued from death more than three times. I know that I've never met you, I've never, till tonight, I've never spoken to you, but I know that you've been redeemed from assassination. I know that men have tried to corner you, and yet you didn't show up for a number of appointments because the Spirit of God whisked you away before they could strategize sufficiently to put you away. You've survived even illnesses because my Spirit has guided you and kept you whole, and it shall continue to keep you whole as long as it pleases the one who called you. And this is the same with anyone who is called of God. Many have said, I have been called of the Lord, and yet they're no longer here. If you are called of God, believe me, there is something special to keep you in his calling and in his keeping. Is that correct or isn't it correct? If that's correct, then we have to understand that right now there is a, trans, there is a transmission, a, trans, a, a transition, I should say, between what was, what is, and what shall be. I know right now that what I'm going to share with you is led of the Spirit. I got it this morning when I got up. I would rather have got it a little later because I was kind of groggy when I got up, 
but sometimes when I wake up fully, I'm no good to God because I'm thinking about eating or drinking or something else. So God has to get me before my blood sugar gets totally out of control. This morning when I got up, I started to think about this word transition. I started to think about in the last days, people have been preaching scriptures way before their time and not really recognizing what they meant. For example, when people preach on Joel 2.28, that afterwards, the prophet Joel said, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. You know the scripture, I'm not going to preach it because I'm not here about me tonight. I'm here about God. That scripture was repeated, grabbed a hold of uh, uh, by the apostle in the time in which it should have been taken and said afterward, God said he would pour out, timing the timing for right then on the day of Pentecost, that God would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And it said that young men should have visions and the old men should have dreams. This building is a part of the vision that the man of God and his wife had a number of years ago. When I met them over 20 odd years ago, and Audrey met them over 20 odd years ago, and a number of other people did, when their vision was birthed. Now this man is no longer a young man. Now he's an older man, but that's okay because his visions have now become dreams. And he's not dreaming anymore of the same things he did when he was a young man with visions. Now, having said that to you, Scripture says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, I hope you'll remember all these things because they're going to come alive to you in just a minute. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, the Word of God says and decrees and declares tonight over you, God's servant, that it says, by a multitude of words, men declare things that are called by God fools. The more they talk, their multitude of words calls them and declares them fools. But the men who by a multitude of business, declare their dreams, are successful. Your dreams are demonstrated as being fulfilled because of your busyness and your business. I have never seen in this country, in this city, a man that works as hard as you and your bride do. I have never seen you sit down. I don't even know when you sleep. You're like a horse. You stand up when you sleep. I can't believe it. When everybody else is sleeping, you're working. And when everybody else is working, you're still working. I can't figure it out. Do you know how hard this man of God works? Do you know? Do you ever say, thank God for the man of God, how hard he works? Do you? Do you? Amen. Keep praying for him because it's not going to get any easier. Now, I want to read this scripture to you and I want you to take it with it and run with it. Would you do that? There are three things or four things that people anoint stuff for. In the Old Testament, we find, first of all, that people anoint other people for health. We're not here to do that tonight. Number two, people anoint other folks for endurance, so they won't quit. There's another form of uh, 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 anointing for the consecration into the ministry office. There's another anointing, which we're going to be talking about tonight, which is transition, because this ministry and many other ministries around the globe, right now the Holy Ghost is anointing them for transition. You might say, what transition? The transition as it is now is going from the uh, priesthood into a position where men and women are asking now for uh, men to rule over them. From a transition from the priesthood for men to rule over them in natural kings and then that transition into men who are led by the Spirit of God. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote a scripture to you and you can write it down if you'd like to do that. Uh, because it's specifically uh, connected to what we're going to be doing tonight and what you're going to start seeing in, uh, talked about amongst spiritual circles, not necessarily religious circles, because religious things in the Scripture are by necessity related to with the priesthood. And the Scripture that I want to look at first is 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 6. Now, I'm looking at an electronic uh, Bible here, and it will probably not work as well as my paper Bible, but my paper Bible weighs about 150 pounds, so I didn't want to bring it. So let's look at this, uh, if you would, please. First uh, Samuel, bear with me because I'm kind of clumsy with these things. First Samuel chapter 8, and I'm going to go to verse 6. I'm only going to read a couple of verses. Is that okay? Now, of course, the people were complaining because they wanted a king like everybody else did to rule over them. And it says, they wanted a king to judge us like the nations. So it says, but this thing displeased the prophet Samuel. And they said, we want a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Samuel, 
You can listen unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for, I, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Now, moving on from that, I want you to move in with me if it's on the backboard. Is it on the backboard? Awesome. Now I want to go to 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're going to move along and transition into the next move of God. Verse 16. This is where you're headed. And I'm going to give you a thus saith the Lord. Now a thus saith the Lord better come to pass or you can throw a rock at me. Okay? 1 Samuel 16. I don't do too many things well, but if I say a thus saith the Lord, then you better hold me accountable. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right? Some of you would love to throw a rock at me, wouldn't you? 1 Samuel chapter 16. All right. Now I'm going to go to verse 10. It worked. Now you know this story here, of course. God says to Samuel, I'm going to send you to the house of Jesse. Now I'm going to skip this, but you know when he gets there, Jesse had not yet heard from God as to who it was out of the sons of Jesse that he was supposed to anoint now, remember I told you, this is an anointing for a transition. Well, you might say to me, no, he's anointing him uh, for service as a king. He was not just going to be a king. He was going to be a king who was to be led by the Spirit of God, not by the Spirit of men. Saul was the same God. He was a king, but he was the king that people wanted, but he was a king that was led by the people and led by his ego. Now we've had a lot of that already in the church. We've had men led by their egos and men who were leading church but the church was being led by men who were being led by men. So we're having man's wisdom leading people in the body of Christ, which led to disaster. And the prophet, as you've read before, was complaining because when he finally got to, to, uh, to, Sam, to, uh, to Saul, he was always complaining because Saul pleased himself. And when Samuel came with the word of the Lord, and when he came back to check on Saul, Saul had disobeyed the word of the Lord because it didn't please him to do so. You remember the time when he came there and there was a, a complaint because he said, what's the bleating of the sheep that I hear? Have you obeyed me? He said, yes, and he hadn't. Well, that's what we're seeing in the body of Christ in many places, and God is tired of it because the Lord is returning soon. How is he going to handle that? He has to raise up men like your apostle, and I'm not just catering to this man of God. I love him, but there's other men of God like him in different places around the world that are hearing the same thing I'm telling you. So when he got there, He's inspected all these fine-looking men, but they're all souls. They're all exactly what they already had. And when he checked them out, the, the word of the Lord came. He said, none of these are what I want. And the prophet said, do you have any more? Now listen to this. He got to the eighth son. The eighth son. Now, if you know, there were eight people that entered into the ark. The word eight, the number eight, means this is it. It's the last one. We're in the last days. Your generation are going to see it. You're the ones, you're the eighth sons. You're the ones that are going to pick them. You're the kind of man that's going to pick the eighth son. You are in the dispensation now where God says, I'm tired of these fleshly men. I'm going to raise up men that will open their mouth and God's going to come out. Now no longer have, have Balaam's that have to be sold out and sell themselves out. These men are going to say what God says. You may not like it, but God loves it. Can you say amen, somebody? Amen. So what we're going to see tonight is a is a, a, an anointing for transition. What kind of transition? Here we go. I'm going to tell you what it is. So, okay, they did it. Here comes David. He says he sent, brought David in, and David looked good, sounded good, and the Lord said, Arise and anoint him because this is the dude. Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Well, now, wait a minute. The Spirit of the Lord's already on our man of God. Yes, but that's going to come on him now for a different reason. And you don't even know fully what that reason is. Because i got a shock for you. It's good, because you already kind of know it, but they don't. Now, I'm going to fill you in on it. <laughs> you ready for this? It's going to come to pass. All right. I'm going to move it down here. This is actually working pretty well tonight. Samuel took the holy anointed, and then the last part of verse 13 says, So Samuel rose up and went back to Ramah. Now, Ramah's kind of interesting because it's got a lot of connotations, but you know, you probably do, that the prophet Samuel lived in Ramah his entire life, from the time he was a little guy all the way up till he died in the same place. The word Ramah is a place which means a place of elevation, but when you stretch it out, 
It means a place of higher perspective. In other words, it's a place where he could view the whole land and get a broader perspective of what's going on all around him. For you're headed. More than that, let's skip down here now to chapter 18. Excuse me, chapter 17. Once David had been anointed by Saul, something happened. Now, young David was a keeper of the sheep. From that day on, he was no longer a keeper of the sheep. He went straight from there, and his father, Jesse, thought he could keep him in the same dispensation, in the same role. So he gave his young lad, who'd been anointed now by the prophet, and there was something totally different about him. David knew it, but he obeyed his father. The father said to him, I'm going to give you a little brown paper bag of goodies and I want you to take it down to your brothers because the other brothers who looked good, sounded good, but they were soulish in their heart, had followed uh, their elder brother down to the battle. When they got down there, you know, the, the, the Philistines were arrayed in battle and I've been to that valley and you think it was a big valley. It's not, it's just a little ditch. In fact, right now, if you went to there, it, it's, I've got to watch the time. It was a little ditch, maybe 20 feet high. And, and they were lined up and down. Saul was in his tent polishing his armor. And when he got there, this giant Goliath was there. And when David went to deliver the lunch, the anointing began to come on him. He's no longer a keeper of the sheep. Now when he gets there, he hears Goliath. You know the story, right? And he says, what's going to happen to the man? What does the guy get that takes care of this idiot? This, this uncircumcised Philistine. And they told him that the king would reward him. And David immediately decides, I'm going to take this guy out. That's what's going to start to happen because your man of God is no longer simply going to be required to be a keeper of the sheep. He's going to, this is what the anointing is going to be for tonight. Are you still out there? By the way, you look beautiful tonight. I love to see God's house filled. To me, it's the most awesome thing in the world because this has to be a bright and shining light. And you are shining brightly tonight. So I am very proud of you. And the Spirit of the Lord in this house tonight is proud of you also. Let me get to the bottom line here. I could preach on this all week, but I'm not going to. When he got down there, immediately the enemies of God seized this young man. See, to God you're still a young man. Seized this young man coming and starts to disdain God's warrior. When I read this, it says that he took in his hand, the rod of a shepherd, which you'll still have, and the five stones that were smoothed out of the brook, which can represent many things. It can represent the testimony that you've, uh, the testimony that you've gathered over your years of service. It can represent the five office gifts. Uh, and he took also the sling, which was the weapon that he had been trained in to defend the flocks of God. And it says that he picked these things up and walked over, and as he did... Goliath, a man of incredible stature, some say 11, 11 foot 6, whose sword, whose, rather, whose uh, spear was nearly 20 odd feet, 22 feet long, the same as a, a weaver's beam, whose armament weighed 300 pounds, just his breastplate. And he began to yell and, uh, abuses. And this is very important. He yelled abuses at David. He says, what am I, a dog, that you should come at me with a stick? And he began to speak curses over the man of God, over David. David returned the prophetic declaration. And this is what the Lord told me this morning. I'm going to read it to you. This is what the Lord told me to speak. He says, With a sling and with a stone shall you go forward. And with the words of thine enemy, with their own words, the sword of Goliath. Remember, you had no sword. He said, You come at me with a sword, but I come at you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, with the words of Goliath. Now, we know that the word of the Lord is also metaphored as a sword, the sword of the Spirit. He says, with the words of thine enemy, with their own words, with the sword of Goliath, shall you slay them altogether, saith the Lord. Yea, with the words of their own accusation shall I judge them, and they shall be their own destruction. And you, my son, shall not stand alone in this the day of my vindication. So I've been instructed to not only just anoint this, this altar, this, 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 this podium, is typical of the whole house, because we don't have time to anoint every vessel in the house. And the Lord told me specifically, sir, not to anoint your head, for that is something between you and the Lord. But I am to uh, hold your hands, 
with the anointing God on them, to anoint your fingers to fight and your hands to war. So that now from this day forward, the Lord is going to send you forward to address the enemies of God, not just here and not just in Nigeria. But your warfare is going to be against the enemies, the Goliaths of God, wherever the Lord may send you. And he will use their accusations, their lies that have been sent forth against you and others like you. And their words are going to be their own downfall. The judgments that they proclaim against you are going to be the same judgments that the enemy will use, with their, the same words that they use against you, the Lord will use in judgments back toward them. So this day, you will not be elevated in height, you'll be elevated in your ability to see and, crit and judge, and also an ability for you to transition in a new level of leadership, which is going to be helpful, because you and God are going to, you and the Lord together are going to work in a whole different level of attainment with others of the similar calling to yourself. You are going to be led together in an alignment with other men of like and precious calling and lead other young men in your set and in your shadow because these are the last days. And I think today you're going to start seeing your dream come to pass, Apostle and Omar Williams. I also want to say to you tonight that those men who have stood with you, uh, many of them are going to be standing in your shadow in this calling. I think many of you have to be willing to let your man of God expand into the vacancy that's being created. And by that I mean there are many men that have been placed in positions that are soulish. I don't say this with any joy, but they have not been productive for God, and now they're being removed. And they're going to be replaced. Even some of the souls are going to be reignited with the Spirit of God. There are some souls that can be, uh, if you like, uh, uh, changed in their, in their desires and refilled with the Spirit of God. But for the most part, they, they cannot be converted. They're going to have to be removed. In this case, this man of God is going to see his dreams come to pass. So uh, I guess we've got some anointing oil here somewhere, don't we? Here we are. I've got some here. And if I could ask you, if you wouldn't mind, if you were hard to do so, if you're in covenant in this house, would you stand with me, if you wouldn't mind? Good. Can I just put this down somewhere? Can we do that? Yeah. Can I have someone hold this? You want to be a part of this? Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome. I didn't take up too much time, did I? on the altar because you're his co-laborer <laughs> a God and King we lift up our voice unto you the maker of heaven and earth and these that we speak, we speak in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Out of you, altar of the Lord, shall the voice of God go to the ends of the earth. As this region had been known as a place of revival many years ago, from you, the holy fire of God will emerge that we go from place to place in the United Kingdom Sharing the souls of men unto he who was crucified. Bringing healing and deliverance. Bringing joy and health. Bringing prosperity over everyone that will pass through it. And sending our messengers into towns and villages to prepare the heart of men for the return of the Lord. May the glory of your presence, O God, never depart from this hour. In Jesus' anointed name, we are praying. Now, Father, your word declares that I has not seen nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. Father, the relationship I've had with this man and his wife, over these 24, 25 years, Father God, I've seen the vision turned into a dream and the dream turned into manifestation and honor under you. 
Father, this morning you spoke to my heart concerning this, your servant. And Father, this night I'm honored, Lord, to stand here and decree and declare your favor and your grace upon them. And upon all those, Father God, that have come under their care and under their keeping, may they mount up with wings as eagles. May the Holy Spirit, O God, look upon them with favor and grace. May the blessing of the blood of Jesus Christ and all of those things, Father, which have gone before to create in them vessels of righteousness. May may the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Father, be with them always, Lord. And let the desires of his heart, Lord God, come to reality. And may the outreach of Christ Faith Tabernacle join hands with all of those other ministries, Father, that you've raised up. And in these last days, Father, may everything that they say and everything that they do glorify and magnify the Son of the living God. And may we be a body, Father, prepared for the soon coming return of our King. May, Father, we be ready, Lord, to cast our works at His feet. And may we hear Him say, Lord God, in unison, well done, good and faithful servants. All these things, Father, we thank you for in the almighty, powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and all the saints and servants of God said, Amen and Amen. It's all yours. As we are standing together, I will read these scriptures in honor of the Lord and for the dedication of this altar. Now, my God, may your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Now arise, O Lord God, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. May your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. May your saints rejoice in your goodness. O Lord our God, do not reject your anointed one. Remember the great promise you made to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, When the heaven is short and there is no rain in the land or when you command your ravagers in the times of your judgment, may this altar be a hiding place and a strong tower that the righteous will run into and they shall be saved. For the name of the Most Holy One shall not cease in this temple. May your eyes be open and your ears be attentive to every prayer offered in this holy place. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' anointed name. Shall we be seated please?
the Lord, the God of Christ's faith tabernacle, who with his own hand has fulfilled his promise to his servant, Apostle A.T.B. Williams. Lord, the God of Christ's faith tabernacle, there is no God like you on heaven or on earth. You keep your covenant of love with your servant who continue wholehearted in your way. Lord, keep your servant the promises you made to him when you said in 1984, he'll be a great leader and the church will be filled of people of all nations. Let the words you have promised your servant, Apostle A.T.B. Williams, come to pass. Amen. The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple. May your eyes be opened towards the temple night and day. Lord, hear the cry of your servant and of your people, Christ, faith tabernacle, as they pray and answer them. Lord, praise be to the Lord, who give us rest, who is the God of Christ, faith tabernacle. Not one word of all the good promises has failed. May we walk in obedience. May we uphold the course of his people and the course of his servant so that all the people may know the Lord is God of Christ, faith, tabernacle. Amen. I present to you the scepter of rulership. <laughs> 